Okay, Shabab. So we are now in lecture 29, where I would like to tell you that we have finished part one of chapter four already. So chapter four, as you recall, was divided into two parts. In the first part, we were using mole balances in terms of conversion. In part two, we're going to use mole balances written in terms of concentrations and molar flow rates. Okay, so let's talk about mole balances on CCRs, plug flow reactors, packed bed reactors, and batch reactors. There are many instances when it is much more convenient to work in terms of number of moles and I concentrations ci or molar flow rates fi rather than x so there are some instances wh where x is not my preferred variables to use for design equation can you think of such cases okay so I'm going to share with you these four cases and I'm going to explain one today and then I'm going to talk about the rest later on. Okay, so one of the cases is that uh, as in a multiple reactions and multiple reactions, we don't like to deal with X for a simple reason. Let's take this reaction. A goes to desired product and A could also go to undesired product. So if we talk about X in this case, it will be useless. It will not give you the full information. For instance, if I tell you, well, we have achieved 100% conversion. Are you going to be happy about this? Well, you're not until you ask me, but where did A go to? Did it go to D or did it go to U? So in this case, if I give you a number of moles, for example, for instance, I would say, oh, we started with 100 moles of A, and then we got 99 moles of D and one mole of U, then you will be happy. Otherwise, if I just specify conversion, that's not a complete information. That doesn't give you the complete picture, nor you would know if you achieved a good thing or not. So let's go with the other cases. The other cases uh, uh, include also liquid phase reactions. In liquid phase reactions, we're just used to follow the concentration, how the concentration of A is decreasing, how the concentration of the product is increasing. So here, X usually is not my preferred variable. It's the concentration. And you have dealt with this in chemistry and applied physical chemistry, where you plotted, for example, concentration versus time instead of conversion versus time and also uh, the third case where x is not, not my preferred variable uh, it's a non-batch unsteady state operation so during the startup and the shutdown i do not use x because it's wrong it will give me wrong answers and also on the membrane reactors now we're gonna explain uh, these instances or these cases one by one طيب. okay so we now modify our algorithm by using concentrations for liquids and molar flow rate for gases as our dependent variable the main difference between the conversion algorithm and the molar flow rate or concentration algorithm is that in the X algorithm, we needed to write a mole balance on only one species. Remember, we had only one design equation, one dx by dv, right? Or one dx by dt if we had batch. Okay, and that was X was based on the limiting reactant. However, in the molar flow rate or concentration algorithm, we might need to write a mole balance on each species. So 
one mole balance might not be enough. We might need to write more than one mole balance. Okay, let's start with the liquid phase. For liquid phase reactions in which there is no volume change, concentration is the preferred variable. The mole balances for the generic reaction, this generic reaction where you have this rate loop, are shown here. For example, for a batch reactor, it's dCa by dT equals Ra. And for B, you write dCb by dT equals Rb, which is B over A, Ra. And for CSTR, it's V equals epsilon naught, Ca naught minus Ca divided by minus Ra. And the same thing you write for B. Okay. Uh, and also for plaque flow reactor, it will be epsilon naught dCa by dV equals Ra and so on. Where are these equations coming from? Of course, you already remember that. It's coming from the mole balances. Okay, for instance, if we take a batch reactor, this is the mole balance. This is the mole balance. Okay, and simply, since you have a constant volume reaction mixture, then the V will go inside the derivative and you can simply write it as dCa by dT equals Ra. The same thing you can do for B. It will be dCb by dT equals Rb and so on. What about for a plaque flow react for a CSTR? Let's talk about CSTR. Yeah. This is a CSTR. Remember that V is written as Okay, if a naught, how can you write if a naught? You can write if a naught as C a naught times epsilon naught, correct? Minus, then we have if a naught, if a naught can be written as C a times epsilon. And then you have here minus R a. And of course, you can say it's a liquid phase reaction, epsilon equals epsilon naught. So you convert this to epsilon naught and then you take an epsilon naught common factor. Okay, so you will have CA naught minus CA divided by minus RA. And again, the same thing you can write for B. So this is the mole balance for B. It will be CB naught minus CB divided by minus RB. What about uh, plug, plug flow reactor? Okay, let's take plug flow reactor. So, here we go. This is plug flow reactor. Okay, so let's see how we can write an equation for a plug flow reactor. Okay, so for plug flow reactor, we are writing D if A by DV equals RA. And you know that if A is CA times epsilon. Okay, let me correct that. Okay, and it equals RA. And of course, in this case, the volumetric flow rate is constant because we have a liquid phase reaction. So epsilon can be written as epsilon naught, and therefore this equation. Epsilon naught goes outside the derivative, so the equation can be written as epsilon naught dCa by dV equals Ra. And likewise for B, we can write it as epsilon naught dCb by dT equals Rb, and so on. Okay. Let's apply what we have learned to the reaction in the last reactor of our ethylene glycol plant. Okay, so determining K from batch data. We're going to do example 4.1 with some modification. So it is desired to design a CSTR to produce 200 million pounds of ethylene glycol per year. 
by hydrolyzing ethylene oxide. You know that already because we have designed this reactor already. However, before the design can be carried out, it is necessary to perform and analyze a batch reactor experiment to determine the specific reaction rate constant K. So we need some kinetic data. Because the reaction will be carried out isothermally in the CSTR and also and therefore in the batch, K will need to be determined only at the reaction time of the CSTR. At high temperatures, there is a significant byproduct formation, while at low temperatures, below 40 degrees C, the reaction does not proceed at a significant rate. Consequently, a temperature of 55 degrees C has been chosen. So you know the reaction already. It's the ethylene oxide plus water and the presence of catalyst gives you the ethylene glycol, which is my product. So A plus B gives you C. Because water is usually present in excess, its concentration may be considered constant during the course of the reaction. Okay, so in this case, we have... Well, let me give you an example here. Um, let's say, for instance, if we have... This is T, and this is CA, and this is CB. And at time zero, we had here one molar of C, and we had, for instance, 50 molar of B. So after, let's say, 10 minutes of reaction, the CA goes to 0.5. And you can tell that CB will simply be 49.5, right? 49.5. Okay, so let's look at the concentrations. During the course of the reaction here, uh, CA dropped by 50%, right? CA dropped by 50%. However, if you look at CB, well, it's almost constant, right? It almost did not change. So that's what we mean by because water is usually present in excess, its concentration may be considered constant during the course of the reaction. Okay, so again, the reaction, or in this case, the reaction is first order in ethylene oxide. It's first order in ethylene oxide. Type. Okay, in the laboratory experiment, 500 ml of a 2 molar solution of ethylene oxide in water was mixed with 500 ml of water containing 0.9 weight percent sulfuric acid, which is a catalyst. Of course, from this information, from this information, you can see that we are mixing two solutions. The first solution contains ethylene oxide with 500 ml and 2 molar of ethylene oxide. The second solution, also 500 ml, but with 0 molar concentration of ethylene oxide. So there's no ethylene oxide. And from here, you can calculate that Ca0 equals 1 molar. Okay. Uh, as I said, Ca0 can be calculated from CA0 can be calculated from NA0 divided by V0. Okay, uh, the temperature was maintained at 55 degrees C. The concentration of ethylene glycol was recorded as a function of time. So here we go. This is the data. Okay, one would say, hmm why the concentration of C was monitored, not the concentration of A, or not concentration of B. Well, first, concentration of B is almost constant, so there is no use of monitoring it. Concentration of A is possible to be monitored. Concentration of C is possible to be monitored. But why we monitor the concentration of C, not the concentration of A? 
Well, it all depends on the analytical device, analytical apparatus that you have in the lab. And you know that we have lots of analytical apparatus in the labs like GC, right? GCMS, HPLC, uh, infrared, you can use it, uh, uh, FTIR, okay? Uh, uh, titration, uh, UV VES, so different uh, apparatus. So it depends which apparatus is available to you and what this apparatus can detect. Okay, never mind. So anyway, we have T versus CC. So using the data and the given table, determine the specific reaction rate at 555 degrees C. So you want to measure the value of K. Of course, you have done this in chemistry and also in uh, applied physical chemistry. Okay, but now what is gonna we're gonna just go through the algorithm as well here, just so that you will get to use the algorithm in this case as well, where we have a liquid phase reaction. Okay, so again, uh, we're gonna go through the algorithm. Okay, so let's start with the design equation. What's the design equation in a batch reactor? Well, as we said, the design equation is simply says dCA by dT equals RA. If you really don't remember where we got this from, obviously we got it from the general mole balance where we had no input, no output, plus generation, so it is RA times V equals accumulation dNA by dt we said it's a liquid phase reaction right liquid phase reaction therefore we can assume the v equals v naught so the volume is constant so the volume goes inside the integration and you get this equation okay so now we have a design equation what about the second step we write the rate law obviously minus ra equals k times ca ka times ca okay what's next we're gonna utilize stoichiometry right of course i don't want to use x right so because we said it's a liquid phase reaction my preferred variable is concentration it's not the x so why do i need the stoichiometry for that well remember cc was given as a function of t not ca so how do we convert cc to ca we use of course stoichiometry right so let's see let's see so we have na is converting right and nc is being formed so how many nc is being formed well you can see that nc minus in C naught, which is the amount of our number of moles of C formed, right, can be calculated from the number of moles of A consumed, right? So it's in A naught minus in A. Okay, however, you need to fix the you need to fix the units. So this is moles a reacted correct and of course you need to multiply it by the correction factor which is basically we say for every one mole of a reacted you have one mole of c form right so this way now you have a the correct equation Okay, so now you know that you can calculate the number of moles of C from the number of moles of A reacted, but I'm interested in concentration, so we're going to divide by the volume, right? So let's divide by volume, and again, it doesn't matter whether we divide by V or V naught, it's the same. Okay, so let's see, so in this case we have cc minus 
सी सी नॉट इक्वल सी ए नॉट माइनस सी ए ओके सो व्हाट एल्स वी कैन डू वी कैन सिंपलीफाई एक्चुअली वी डोंट हैव इनिशियली वी डोंट हैव सी इनटू द रिएक्शन मिक्सचर सो देवरफॉर कैन टेक सी ए टू द अदर साइड एंड नाउ वी हैव सी ए equals C A not minus C C. So we we also already know what the value of C A is because we said we know how to calculate it. We said C A not equals N A not divided by V not. And remember, uh, N A not is coming from the first solution, right? The first solution, which was remember, first C A zero one multiply by V zero one and the other solution did not contain A, so we don't need to add it. It only contained water and catalyst. And this guy V naught is simply V zero one plus V zero two. And remember, uh, this guy was two molar. This guy was five hundred ml, so that's point five. And this guy is point five times point five will give you one liter. So basically, we have one molar. The solution is C A naught is one molar. Oops, what did I do? One molar. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's one molar. You know. Anyway, so this is how we calculate C A from C C. Okay. Then you can combine and evaluate. Or from the table right away you can calculate ca and then let's combine these two equations together let's combine these two equations together so we'll have dca by dt equals minus ra where minus ra sorry equals ra where ra equals minus k ca and then you can evaluate this equation Obviously, you will write it as DCA by CA equals minus K times DT, and then you can integrate, right? You can integrate at time zero. You have C equals C naught at time T, CA equals CA, and upon integration, if you allow me, let me just raise this portion. Okay, so upon integration, this guy will become ln C A evaluated from C A naught to C A, and this guy will become minus K times T evaluated from zero to T, and the evaluation of this is simply ln C A over C A naught equals minus k times t so how do you find the value of k well you know this already we're gonna plot we're gonna plot ln c a over c a naught versus t and the slope should be minus k correct okay or of course instead of minus k you can switch the Len. You can write len C A not over C A instead of len C A over C A not. Okay, and this way you have the equation written without the minus k. Okay, now you're gonna plot. You're gonna plot len C A not over C A versus T. So let's look at our table. We had this information right to begin with. Now we know how to calculate CA from CC. So we're gonna calculate CA from CC and then we can calculate this ratio and then we can calculate the len. All of this for the different values of T. Okay, so we're gonna plot this two columns together and and here we go len c a naught over c a versus t and i'm gonna fit the uh fit a linear equation into the data 
So I'm going to do curve fitting, right? Curve fitting. And this is also known as linear regression. And the slope, the slope is K. The slope is K. Okay, so here we go. K, in this case, is 0.311 per minute. So we were able to find the value of K. Of course, you can use the semi-log plot as well. You'll get the same result. You'll get the same result. Okay, so we are done with this example.